Welcome back, uh, Saturday morning. I appreciate everybody coming to, to the channel here and uh, tuning in to another uh, Collector's Radio. Yes, we've been doing quite a few of these lately, and huh, you know what? If you happen to stumble across the video and you're going, what is going on here? Like you're kind of lost in the, uh, you know, maybe you uh, on the channel or just came across the video and um, you're not understanding what we're doing here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're just kind of chatting, hanging out. I'm going to read some of your comments, and uh, we're going to get going to it. All right, and also uh, we did bring out some... Uh, books and stuff like that as i promised you because the last time we were talking and i said you know what um we uh there was a comment that brought up uh, somebody was asking the questions on what books uh to uh that they should be looking for and everything like that so i actually brought out two that um i think are really awesome books that are out there uh so anyway uh we'll get to all that but let's go ahead and read the comments no particular order but here we go stephen k uh another great radio show i collect gun books uh some of my favorites are the uh, modern gunsmith by james v howe uh, i'm guessing that's the <laughs> um i've not heard of that one though uh, the course, the uh, the Colt 45 automatic by Jerry. I think that book is, uh, it, the, yeah, the shop manual. That's a really good book to have. Um, they, it's actually kind of expensive for what it is because uh, it's uh, just a paperback. At least mine is paperback. I got mine in a bundle deal on uh, an auction that I got because it was a couple of uh, old school Wilson combat video or books in there that I wanted and so I got the shop manual in there it mine's a little old it's falling apart for sure um, but uh, yeah the M 1911 complete assembly guide by Walt uh, Kulik um, I have not heard of that one either so again here we are we're sharing some really cool stuff here with everybody all good books and I keep on my gun bench yep all right, and uh, yeah, actually, I'm glad this comment came up next because um, what a great uh, video that they just uh, did out. Uh, if you want to go and check it out, this is from Beretta 9mm USA. Um, my buddies over there, um, we got Beretta Senior and, of course, my fellow lefty. Um, they put out a video on custom 1911s, and I tell you, uh, to me... Uh, I already uh, feel like Beretta 9mm USA probably puts out some of the best 1911 videos on YouTube, period. Uh, <laughs> so my hat goes off to them. And uh, But they did a video on custom ones, and I think it was, a, you know what, it was about a 20-minute video, and it goes by like that. I mean, two min it felt like two minutes. There's so much information in there. Um, I felt that they, sp they spoke the truth. Um, I think that it was a really good video that... Uh, answered a lot of things uh, to me that I felt was uh, really important and uh, you know what and they made a really good a lot of good points in there and unfortunately I guess they were being badgered by some uh, kind of uh, you know as with anything we do here um, you know some negativity and I mean that just you know unfortunately is part of the territory um, I one time actually because I'm I and I'll, and I'll admit it I'm a fanboy of Colt. I love Colt 1911s. That's just my thing um, because of the heritage, the uh, the cool factor, the old schoolness of it, and just the way it is. And somebody actually one time accused me of actually being paid by Colt, and it's like gee, I wish. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know that's never gonna happen. Um, but anyway, uh, but they they have a really good video on custom 1911s. I thought there was a lot of truth to be said in that video. Um, I'll let it speak for itself. Go ahead and check it out. Um, head over to their channel. I, I suggest uh, checking out that video if you like 1911s, especially being able to see uh, some really high-end 1911s. And that's one thing that they, they made a good point of. And Young Beretta said it. I believe it was Young Beretta that said it. Um, my fellow lefty friend over there. Um, you know, there was some truth to it. You know what? I mean, it's like, yeah, they got, they had their hands on a lot of this stuff uh, several, many, many of these very high-end custom 1911s. I would, uh, I would bet my money that they probably know what they're talking about. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. My, hey, my fellow lefty, thank you so much for the kind words in this video. Um, I watched this uh, vid, this the um, 
this morning uh, when it was published. Oh, wow, you're up early. <laughs> um, yeah, because we always have this thing set to come up early in the morning for everybody to, to enjoy. Um, I just couldn't message you at the time because I was dead tired from editing uh, two 30-minute long uh, Les Bear Custom, uh, you know, 1911 videos that night. Hey, there we go again. Uh, I'm always looking forward to any of their 1911 stuff. Um, the top five uh, gun videos uh, take a lot of time and work and editing together. Always keep uh, up the wonderful work, uh, sir. Uh, my dad and I learned many great things from watching your channel. Wow, that that's thank you. I appreciate that. I've learned a lot from your channel. Again, you are one of my favorites out there for sure. So, and also make sure you check out uh, CZ 9 Millimeter USA and uh, their Legion of Tools channel. Also, I'd like to also give another shout out to uh, one of my other favorites is Trees of Blowing. Um, he's got a great channel too. He just, you know, there's always, you never know what's going to happen on there and what kind of videos he's putting out. I really think he, um, he deserves a lot more followers than he's getting. Um, hey, look at that. My old friend, I carry one. <laughs> uh, if you own older firearms uh, and those old loading manuals are a gold mine for information loading data that will keep those old guns shooting. There's a lot of truth to that. Think about what he said in that comment. There's a lot of truth to that. You know, and uh, you know, just uh, good stuff like brisket. You know. All right. Uh, Danger Man. I love that Colt. Uh, I saw one like that and I passed on it because of the caliber. I'm not a reloader, so that would not have been a good fit for me. Ironically, that's Charles Bronson's revolver in the original Death Wish. Uh, his was nickel in 32 Colt uh, New Police. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, when the, the fellow, uh, he goes to Arizona, in fact, and they say, the guy says, uh, you're checking his bag, right, or something, or you're carrying it on, or I forget. And he says, a little something for you, and he has a box in there or something. And, uh, back when you could do something like that. Uh, all right, Frank B., uh, when people say a 1911 or revolver uh, don't carry enough rounds, I quote, and I love this, the late, great James Yeager, how many times do you plan on missing? <laughs> you know, um, and that's sad that we, you know, somebody like James Yeager passed away. Um, we, you know, um, I've always said this about James Yeager. That, you know what, if you can actually, he did have some pretty um, high-strung opinions there, but uh, there was some good points he made. There was. There, uh, he was a good instructor. Uh, so, all right. Uh, Scottish American, yes. Um, Scottish American, great guy. Uh, go and check his channel out as well. He's also been doing some stuff on uh, the weasel, Pop Goes the Weasel. Uh, so he's been doing some really good stuff over there. Um, nice tribute, I would say, very good tribute to our late friend, uh, Mr. Holster, another great YouTuber as we lost so many that have passed away. All right, I understand your position uh, as far as the counter and uh, information. Uh, when I first got behind the counter, he's, by the way, he is in the industry as well. Uh, not everyone wanted to teach. They would stab you in the back and, uh, and have paperwork issues my first week. My boss was cool about it. After I explained the situation, I proceeded to uh, spend the next six months reading books every night, studying as I never wanted to be put in that spot again. Now I've been in this industry for almost 13 years. Wow, that's about where I'm at. Um, I will share with uh, folks wanting to learn who have specific questions and need the research done. Otherwise, I keep to myself. Um, that's pretty much exactly how I do it. Uh, I really do. I'm very, very reserved in that aspect. I don't, uh, as they say, just start spewing information uh, recklessly at counters or anything. There is no need for it. Um, there is no need uh, to do it. Um, I, I kind of, you know, uh, even it even goes back to there's so much things that, you know, what many years ago I would have uh, definitely ate up and loved at the counter. Now it just kind of getting to the point where it's burned its wheels for me. Um, I still enjoy it. I still enjoy the hobby. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it, you know, like he was talking about 13 years. I mean, that's a long time. I look back at that and going, yeah, geez, I mean, yeah, 2009 or something like that, you know. I mean, it's uh, it's been wonderful, but it definitely has uh, it it has had its uh, ups and downs. Let's put it that way. 
All right, Slimfire, 54, good uh, good talk uh, today, JW. And you're right, it pays to be a good listener. Yes, I have all, always, I have, that's my mentality now. I talk low, talk slow, and don't talk too much. All right, I've had um, a Smith & Wesson model 657-41 Magnum with an 8 3 8 inch barrel. I agree with you on Lee products. Very well made. Thanks, Slim. Yeah, um... You know, again, like Lee products, definitely, um, I, I'm a big believer. I, I love that stuff because I've also noticed that most of the uh, the places you go and you look at their stuff, they don't carry Lee. And actually, when you start seeing, like, there, there's another shop in, in town here that's a good friend of mine, uh, friends of mine, uh, and you go in there, and when you see their reloading section, which that's majority of what they do, and that's actually where I buy uh, most of my um, equipment and stuff and components, um, you can tell they're reloaders. You can tell they're, they that's what they do because when you look at their stuff, it's clearly like, yeah, okay, you know, um, and they carry Lee products. Uh, in fact, when you look at their dyes in their section, yeah, that's what they got, Lee dyes, and, and they keep Starline brass and uh, bulk uh, bullets and, and all that stuff. Uh, I get my a lot of my blasting bullets from them. I mean, sure, it's cast lead, but and it's dirty and all that, but you know what? I... I I love the price tag. I'm not rich, you know. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, another one from Crazy Scotsman. Having a solid uh, collection of books is very important. I bought mine over the years uh, to help uh, with appraisals, etc. The only time I rattle things off, uh, it, uh, rattle off things to folks is when they try to test my knowledge because of being younger. They look down on on. They look down on it. Um, I see it all the time at gun shows, so looking at old Smiths, uh, Colts, Mill Serps, and etc. Um, yes, uh, that is the other side of the, uh, the that kind of stuff. Um, I've experienced that too. I totally can relate to you there. Um, sometimes it uh, it is necessary, and I will say that sometimes it's necessary to, in a sense, uh, you know, come, sometimes I, uh, you know, we, we you need to do that. Put somebody in their place, maybe or something like that. You know, um, we won't get into too much of like. Um, I've had a quite of, uh, I've had a lot of, like, well, let's put it this way. I'm going to leave it at this. I've been in the in the gun counters about as long as he has, about 13 years. Uh, maybe, you know, I think maybe I got a year on him. I don't know. Uh, but that's not really relevant. But I have met at the counters, I have met salt of the earth people, the nicest, kindest people you could possibly think of. But on the other side of that coin, I have met the most wretched people. I will leave it at that. All right. Harrison Mantooth. Uh, hey there, uh, Bat Jack. Good afternoon to you, sir. I enjoy your collector's radio show as usual. Uh, I used to use, I used to use a one steak sauce years ago, but now uh, I like my steaks barefoot. <laughs> Maybe some butter and garlic to cook. Um, uh, them in a use uh, useless uh, un unless they're cooked on a grill. Yeah. Um, and, oh yeah, and gotta have some uh, saute mushrooms to go with that steak too. Oh yeah. FYI, a week ago I visited I visit a local uh, gun shop. I had a model 2910 and a display counter. Of course, I drooled all over the counter. When the salesman told uh, what the sale when the salesman told several others have been looking at it, I immediately pulled out my wallet and my credit card. Long story short, 25 minutes later, I walked out with it. Um, that's just one more reason I love, I left California. Uh, take care, Bat Jack, and we'll see you on down the trail. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually, I've been meaning to, speaking of all this barbecuing, I've been meaning to do a barbecue video with barbecue guns and stuff with a certain individual. I know if you were listening, you know who I'm talking about. You're like my other family out here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, Squidlift uh, picked up a Smith & Wesson 4-in-1 uh, screwdriver at Brownells yesterday because of you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion. Always the, you know what, as my uncle would say back in Hawaii, and I miss him, and I hope he's in, in good health. Um, I know he's 
He's getting up there. Um, but you know what he told me when he got that? He gave that to that screwdriver set to me. And he says, here, this is so you don't screw up. <laughs> Bohemian Hunting Club, another great channel. Love those guys over there. Uh, 1935, good deal. Yes, we're talking about that old uh, Smith, or Colt that we had. We still have not actually done a, a solo video with it yet. We're falling behind. Um, an Angry Ranger. There is no Tupperware pistols here. A 1911 A145 auto and the rest are single action revolvers, double action. I've uh, been loading my own since a, uh, since a boy in the late 50s. I haven't bought factory ammo in decades, over 60 various bullet molds, uh, many of which long discontinued. Uh, loads of ideal in Lyman uh, 310 gear, uh, Lyman uh, Spartan press, and uh, um, Spar T turret uh, from the early uh, 60s I bought new manuals dating back to the 50s yeah I mean those manuals are I mean, when you look at them and you see stuff that you know that that's pretty uh, that's why I love those old manuals plus there's a lot of recipes in there you're never gonna find again um, I'm old I'm old school and of the opinion that if it ain't broke don't fix it yes absolutely I'm currently teaching my nephew all the old school ways of casting and loading. Um, he's going to inherit all my weapons and equipment when I kick the bucket. Yes, um, and I'm like that, and I and I will admit that that I uh, I'm very old school. I'm an old soul, as you would you would say. I'm not much for the Tupperware guns, although they have their place. They have their you know definitely I understand of uh, it, but for me, um, my interests and my wants, I feel like I'm like. I should be experiencing this like, you know, 50, 60 years in the past um, because that's all the stuff I'm, I'm interested in. Uh, I, I just, I really do. I mean, I feel like so much of the, uh, the I don't know if, it, know if it's fair to say generation, um, I, but it might be. Uh, but they just, uh, you know, they, they don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I'm not into that stuff. Uh, they they get they know everything about all the, the plastic fantastic and Lego stuff and uh, you know and, and but I'm like no I'm a, like look at that that's a Smith and Wesson six twenty four right there. Round butt, combat grips. <laughs> all right, KSFWG Batjack JW the six fifty seven is a stainless version of the model fifty seven. Thank you. The end frame Smith and Wesson revolver at 41 Magnum. I am looking for this for a six inch barrel. Ah, okay. I saw a speaking of all those end frames and stuff like that, um, 624s. I saw a um, a uh, three inch. Uh, I guess that would be a 657. I didn't know that's what the model would have been. Uh, three inch round butt 41 mag. Um, that was some years ago. They wanted they wanted a hefty price for it. Sometimes I feel like man, I don't know. Maybe I should have got that. All right, and, and last but not least, Joe P. My man Joe, swig of coffee for Joe. Um, I reload for fourteen different calibers: handgun, rifle, shotgun, and also uh, lead cast for all fourteen, with exception of one set of RCBS dies Dillon 650 press and Hornady electric powder measure everything I use dies molds presses tools etc are all Lee precision great value for the money I consider myself really lucky to have purchased everything before the COVID um, I would uh, get uh, the die sets for 30 35 the bullet molds for 12 bucks yeah and that's true I mean back then it was you know it I, I do recall those dies when I started doing all this. I mean, a die set was like the four the four uh, pistol die the Lee set was like twenty bucks. Um, crazy stuff to think about. But uh, I'm always been like when it comes to my dies. I know there's dies that do the seating and crimping at the same time. I prefer mine to um, to not do that. Uh, I like the separate. I like that separate. Uh, uh, thing for it and everything. I, I just like everything separate on the operation like that. So I been I was once like you know such a hoarder with reloading stuff. I still kind of am, but you know I always can justify another press. Hey, I'll just get another press. Why not? <laughs> but okay, you know what? Since we are like 19 minutes into this show, and that uh, 
<laughs> it's crazy. We haven't even got to what we we're going to talk about. But that's because we have so many comments, so many people doing some, you know, sharing information. That's what it's all about. Um, okay, the books. This is probably the coolest book set for 1911s that I think um, are out there right now that I've discovered. And that is the Vicar's Guide. Um, this is volume. I bought both volumes. When I heard they were doing now the first time this came around... When it was the book one, I missed out. I didn't do it. I, I I was one of the guys that said, I don't know. You know, when I saw that price, I said, for a book, really? But you know what? I regretted it. I'm going to tell you that I did. I kicked myself for not getting it. So when I heard they were doing a two-volume set, I was going to do it no matter what. And I'm not going to say that these were cheap. They're not cheap. They were not cheap. Um, this is volume one. There's volume two. Um you know what, and also with things that was happening, um, unfortunately, Larry Vickers also has been sick. Unfortunately, uh, I even hate to say those kind of words because I really like Larry Vickers. I think he's really cool. Um, and he played a real uh, a key part of me searching into uh, a Wilson Combat 1911. But I did get the signature edition, which he's got a signature right here, which I thought... I just wanted to do that. Um, it was a little bit more, but not much more. I definitely wanted to get it. Uh, the only thing on this set that I wish I would have done was I wish I would have got the um, the case. There there was a case that, that they slip into. Um, How I store them is pretty much in a box that they got uh, to me. If you are interested in seeing what is inside these books, I have two videos, uh, one on each volume, where I actually went through the almost the whole, I believe the whole book. They're kind of... Uh, a lot of uh, pictures in there and everything like that but to give you kind of an example now book one volume one is all kinds of cool close-ups of the old school stuff markings stampings all of this I mean the photographs in this stuff and the amount of cool stuff that you can see is amazing and the um, aside from the pictures they have all these little side notes of what the inspection marks mean and all kinds of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, the information, it's a, it's a large book. It's a coffee table book, like they said, uh, but it really goes to show you a lot of the cool stuff. As far as books go, 1911 stuff, these books are, you know, again, they're not cheap, and I realize that, and I'm not made out of money myself, but there's sacrifices that need to be made. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so the first book, the first volume is all of the old school uh, from literally, I think this is like serial number five uh, on the front cover, the 1911. This is all like the original first like 1911s, uh, all the original war models, the commercial models from, you know, World War One, World War Two, and those kind of stuff. So that is, uh, if you love all those old uh, military parkerized stuff, fire blue, uh, original oil blues that they were doing, um, definitely first volume. Um, I recommend both volumes, but this one, volume two, is my favorite of the bunch. I love this one because this is the one that starts going into the Series 70s, the 80, all that kind of stuff, and these are the custom ones. These are the ones that were... People are taking them and doing all kinds of different custom work to them and doing all that kind of other stuff to it. And I really like that because it showcases a lot of the early custom work, which is what I was really interested in seeing is all the early custom work that was being done to a lot of those. Um, you can see here, this is actually on the front cover, one by done by uh, Larry Vickers right here, that I think this is the Ken Hackathorn birthday gun, if I'm not mistaken, that they showed. But, uh, you know, really good, I mean, just right here in the front cover, a really good photograph of the, the Series uh, 70 right there with the upgrades that they did to it. But that's what fascinated me was all of the early custom work stuff like that. That's the really cool things. That, and I'll tell you, there was a, there's a little story I want to share with you. On um, I had an opportunity some time back that I really, I, I kicked myself. I should have got it, but it was not cheap. And of course, that's the story with everything, right? You know, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm just like you. I'm just like, I'm an average working stiff, um, check to check. Uh, you know, so spending a lot of, you know, spending 
a good chunk of money, it hurts, you know, it hurts financially, but I'm not going to put myself out. Uh, you know, I'm, I, you know, we need to eat, we need to pay bills, mortgages do, you know, uh, electric bill, gas bill, all these things are going up and up and up. As you know, we go to the grocery store. My gosh, you walk out with two bags in your hands. You're going, I just blew a hundred dollars. What happened? You know, um, I'm watching the needle in my gas tank literally drop and I'm going, you know, I'm like, geez, like, how did I, I mean, you know, you start thinking, do I got a fuel leak? But no, it's just, this is all part of it. When all these prices are, are so high, this stuff stings. It does. So I get it. Um, a lot more, less than, you know, when I purchase all this stuff, um, the economy was a little bit better. <laughs> so I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and my dollar went further. All right, but anyway, but yeah, these are uh, the Vickers Guide books. Um, I do believe they are still available, actually, on his, uh, on his website. I do believe they're still available. Uh, I don't think the signature editions are, uh, but I did, I did want the signature editions just because the, just the way it was. Because Larry Vickers, um, you know, I, I consider him one of the last uh, of the 1911 guys. You know, him, Hackathorn, Bill Wilson, all that. Uh, so, you know, that, that's who I consider kind of like the last, like, I, I feel like this is my generation's uh, Jeff Cooper, if you will. So, all right. Uh, but no, he was very instrumental into me actually uh, taking the leap and uh, ending up with a, a Wilson Combat, which is a custom 1911. And this is the only one I've, I, I've got of this kind of a, a price tag or custom 1911, if you will. Uh, I definitely, uh, it was not cheap, but I'm glad I did it because it's not something I'm going to get rid of or anything like that. Uh, I just had to have this thing and I'm, I'm really glad I bought it. What I have is the CQB Elite and that's the one that I, I chose to get. Uh, I saw it there at the shop and I said, you know, and I picked it up and I fondled it. I've always said, you know, I've kind of, I said this over the years of my 1911 stuff, like, I'm like, you know, I'm not exactly opposed to it. I may have been a little, may, may have spoken a few harsh words here and there about 1911s that are like $3,500. Um, but uh, I, I've always said, though, I'm not opposed to seeing why, what makes it that. And I tell you, it's all this amazing handwork, um, the amount of... Uh, attention to detail that they've been doing uh and i've said this many times uh, some but you know people have asked me well do you have buyer's remorse when you really don't know absolutely not i think the gun's worth every dollar every penny that is spent on it because it really is uh all that um it's one of those things where it's rare to say that it is as advertised it is uh exactly what they say it is it's uh really top of the line stuff and once I had it and I started working and checking it out, I said, I got to have this thing. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to be able to get out of there without it. So, um, yes, I, I did pick this up. Um, so, um, <laughs> enough drooling on the, uh, this. We have videos on this and everything. Uh, one thing I want to share with you before we uh, head out is I did change the way I uh, took these things down. Because for a long time, uh, I took them down the traditional way, you know. Um, back end to the uh, to the, the tabletop and then you know the old school way push that down and turn the uh, the barrel bushing I changed the way I've been doing that uh, lately because of uh, owning one of these and I have done it the traditional way to this many many times um, but I, I recently kind of quit doing that uh, because of the pressure that when you're pushing that that spring down and everything there you know I guess there is something to be said about the pressure of everything pushing on the bushing and then you're kind of using and overriding it in there and um, you're putting wear on it I guess you could say and I know this is kind of like really like really are you really spilling hairs here you know something like that but I've I've I, I've heard it being talked to by or talked about by a few people that are uh, obviously very much more they forgot more than I'll ever know kind of people including Larry Vickers himself uh, say something about that so I kind of you know I kind of went with this you know on that and I kind of start changing up the way I take them down so the way I take it down simply is very much like a Browning high power um, obviously 
make damn sure it's unloaded. And I push it to that notch right there and I pop that slide stop off and I hold on to the bottom here and keep everything captured and then release the spring and everything. And then now I can rotate that and take it out and do the cleaning there. And that's the way I've been doing it now um, because uh, just because of that thought process of, of doing it that way and uh, what was said about these because you know when you have something like this they're, they're finely fitted you know the and you can tell like when you get something like this there is no movement there there really isn't I mean it, and I want to keep it as nice as I want you know as I can um, especially when you spend like you know a lot of money on something you know or any kind of amount of money or something I, I look at it like you know that's my hard-earned cash right there and I want to take care of it I don't want to um, you know abuse it or or do any kind of um, you know unnecessary abuse to it so but yeah anyway that's the way I've been doing it uh, you know, and I know you can say yes, you know, and this this method right here, you know, you're still kind of turning it and doing all that. And you can take some of the pressure off here and you can feel it kind of turn, but I try it this way it kind of minimizes the amount of, uh, of of doing that. I don't know, could be crazy, could be just, you know, overthinking it or whatnot, but um, it's just something that I've changed in my way of doing this is that's just the way something I've changed uh, doing it. Some of the other things, you know, may, you know, Maybe, you know, it's like, yeah, I, w I don't care about that one. I just, you know, do it that way. But I've kind of got worked it in the habit of doing it that way now. So, again, I don't know. You know, I could just be crazy doing it. But, uh, again, there was a few people, including Vickers himself and other people that have made comments about that. So, maybe, I don't know, it was something I thought about and something I changed up in my routine. So, take it for whatever it's worth. I'm going to sign off for now. And we have, um, we covered a lot of cool stuff here, I think, and uh, hopefully you stick around. And uh, if you've made it this far, at least, <laughs> so um, if you have, that's amazing. You're really a, uh, a collector's radio show junkie, aren't you? <laughs>